this webcast, what are we going to be talking about here? We're going to talk about automating semantic endpoint protection remediation with semantic workflow. ITS has been around since uh, 1984. We are a semantic partner, we're a national partner, and a platinum partner. We were a partner of the year in 2011. Um, two of the four years the BL Pierce product uh, were awarded a partner of the year. We were at we're a master specialized partner, which means that we uh, have some additional certificates and consulting knowledge around the semantic product set that other partners might not have. The real key here is that we're focused exclusively on the semantic endpoint management and security solutions. While we're based and headquartered in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, we have consultants all over the country. I think we have about 40 full-time consultants these days. Um, they're out consulting on um, the Altiers product set, semantic endpoint protection, semantic DLP, uh, semantic virtualization, um, and the semantic mobile management and mobile app management products. Let's talk about the problem. Uh, when I do these webcasts, I like to talk about, first of all, the problem, the solution, uh, the software that we use and then show a, a brief little demo. So uh, what's the problem? The problem is that there are a lot of alerts within the SEP manager. Potentially, hopefully not. Hopefully we don't have a lot of virus issues or uh, people doing things that they shouldn't do within the SEP council or within your organization, but chances are you do. How do I respond to those SEP events? Um, do I get notifications of those alerting Etc. And is there a way to deal with this in a somewhat automatic way? Um, the other issue that um, we potentially can run into a lot is that last bullet point. What happens uh, 11 o'clock at night, getting ready to go to bed, and uh, my email starts to explode with a with a SEP event or an incident? How do I go out and respond to those? You know, I got to pull up my laptop, connect to the corporate VPN fire up the SEP council, et cetera. What if I could respond to those through uh, either an email or a web page? Uh, that might uh, ease the pain of having to do those late at night, et cetera. So we're going to talk about a way to do this. Um, the solution is we're going to automate this through a workflow. Uh, we're going to talk our way through this workflow and what it does. Um, basically, the long and short of it is we have a workflow that we've created that will send out an email alert to a web with a link to a web page and from that will allow you to initiate tasks within the SEP management council. So whether that task in this case that we use is to initiate a live update and a full scan, we could change the collection that the computer belongs to, all kinds of items in an automatic way, automatic and more importantly repeatable process. Let me talk a little bit about the products that we use. Right. We're going to leverage the Semantic Endpoint Protection 12.1. We are going to enable, uh, make sure that the web services are enabled out of the POM, are enabled in the SEP Manager. Um, by default, they're only enabled to talk to the Semantic Protection Center. We have that product installed. So we're going to make some changes within the SEP Manager. Uh, we're going to run a bunch of queries, and I can show you some of the queries that we're leveraging against the Microsoft SQL database. So uniquely using SQL for your database, not the embedded database that comes with semantic endpoint protection. Also, we're going to leverage semantic workflow solutions. So within a semantic workflow, there are some uh, pre-built, defined semantic web components. We're going to leverage those. And then we at ITS built some, some SQL queries against the SEP database. And we'll show you those in just a minute at the end. First thing that you need to do is to make sure that the SEP um, web services are enabled. Within the SEP manager, um, we have to en enable these components. So workflow can talk to web services, but we need to make sure that they're allowed to authenticate to that web service. So you're going to open up the SEP manager, you're going to log in, and then click on the uh, admin option here. And then we need to go to servers. from find the site that you're going to manage. In this case, it's the local site. And we're going to edit the site properties. So right-click, select Edit Properties, and pull up this tab. And there's a Web Services tab that you need to, to, to click on. And then down towards the bottom, there's this 
To work with web services outside of the protection center environment, you can enable session-based authentication. We're going to do that. What this allows is semantic workflow to call the semantic endpoint protection web services and then view items. So the components built into the semantic workflow product for SEP call these web services. We need to add the semantic endpoint components in our workflow. So open up your project in semantic or in workflow designer. You need to click on the project tab, click on the libraries tab, and then you can add the semantic components components.sep.dll. Uh, you can see this down at the bottom here, um, the last item in my pretty short and sweet today on, um, on actually what's happening. So like any good demo, um, things went wrong. So all I have today is an actual demo of the workflow itself. We're going to be spending the rest of the webcast working in the demo uh, or working in the, the workflow and are talking our way through the process. A couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, let me uh, get the whole 1,200 uh, foot view as I zoomed in and out. Um, you should be seeing all of the workflow on this screen. Um, it's got a couple of different models and a couple of other items going on here. And we'll, we'll talk our way through this and then as I mentioned We'll actually show this in a separate video that we'll put up on um, our website. A couple of things I want to talk about. Um, we have this SEP remediation library here that we've added into the system. Um, and this is where we're doing a bunch of queries against the Microsoft SQL database. So a couple of items here. Um, we're going to get our policy groups um, by name. We're going to get all of the alerts by a computer. And we're also going to uh, uh, aggregate those computers. So let me show you an example of what the SQL query looks like um, here. Really what we're grabbing is all of the computers within, a, within the set manager. We're going to organize them by domain. And we're also going to get all of the alerts for that computer. Once again, this is calling against the the uh, semantic endpoint protection database. Getting a note here, another note, another question, uh, that there are no web services in version 11.x. So thanks, Ben, for passing that note out. If you run in semantic endpoint protection 11, there are no web services. So could this be done? I don't know. It'd have to be changed a lot. Uh, be a good reason to upgrade to version 12.1 if you're running. Uh, version 11x. Thanks, Ben, for passing that note out. So my one, a couple of queries that we are creating against the SEP database, and we will leverage those uh, queries that we see in this remediation library to do our actual work. So let's kind of talk our way through the process and actually show what's going on. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dig into the database um, this is a monitoring project, right? It's going to be running in the background. It's going to contact my SEPM at a specific interval and then grab any alerts that come up, right? So these are my first two um, items, my embedded rule models here. Is there current alert or behavior log issues? So, um, you know, Jonathan plugged in his corporate USB drive or his non-approved USB drive generated alert. Our uh, Jonathan launched, you know, a, you know, Solitaire, which is a block um, application. We're going to do this twice just to make sure that everything gets handled correctly from an error handling um, mode. And one of the things that we're going to do once that alert is generated is we're going to move this. We're going to move my computer from the current SEP collection that it is in into um, what we call a lockdown group, right? And that's this guy right here. Well, what the, everybody then says, well, what does a lockdown group do? Well, this is a, a collection within SEP that has different policies. So within my demo environment, for example, a lockdown, my lockdown collection has policies that do not allow any the media. So in this case, it, when I make uh, an incident or generate an incident, um, I'll be, the workflow will move my computer into a lockdown group, which will then 
apply and move uh, access to any. These get client group structure, move the client. These are all components that come from uh, the SEP workflow, uh, SEP components that we've added into the system. But this is really where the real work is going to do. So what's going to happen is, uh, you know, Jonathan plugs in a, a non-corporate USB drive, um, and that generates an incident. So what's going to happen here? So these forms are all forms that you can customize, and right now they're pretty simple, right? Because it's just a demo. The first thing that's going to happen is going to generate an And what I'm going to have is have in my application properties for this workflow, I'm going to have to find who gets this email, right? So I, I call the, the semantic uh, asset or SEP admin group to send a, a group of emails out. And really what you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is customize your text within the um, email. But the important thing is what's going to happen is I'm going to get a response page URL. And this form is really where we're going to handle all of the, the items. So let me jump back into this form. This is all allowing me to remediate things. So let's go ahead and, and, and maximize my page, get everything centered and cleared up, all of that fun jazz, right? So a uh, couple of things. So Jonathan plugs in his non-corporate USB drive. It generates an alert. The SEP admin then gets a notification. You know, Jonathan plugged in this or uh, incident was, was generated in the SEP manager. Let's actually go through the media. So I'm going to get into this form, and there's a couple of things that it's going to do. Now, this is a very basic form here. Right, and it's going to list all of my computer's incidences that were generated. Very basic here. Um, you're going to obviously have uh, your own theme and branding set up here. You can also build this out to be more descriptive. Um, down towards the bottom of this form is going to be the force update and scan on all of the listed computers. So what we're doing in this is we are using workflow to force a live update and then to force in a scan of the system based on the event. Uh, if there are other items and other tasks that I can kick off using these set components, but this is what we're going to do. So my web form comes up, it shows you know Jonathan's computer, Chad's computer, Matt's computer, Stephanie's computer, all of these computers that have instances. I can either force an update and scan on all of the computers, or I can do individual computers. When I click continue here, it's going to launch this other form that is going to then allow me to do comments and descriptions. So um, view description, uh, more information about this event, and then add additional comments. Route back into the, uh, the form, click continue. If this is... Uh, if I flag this as a false positive, what we need to do is then we need to go jump back to that main view, uh, notify somebody that we got a false positive, remove it from the work uh, the lockdown group, and all of that. If indeed this is an incident, we are going to then um, you know, add it to a scan collection. We're going to then do the uh, live update and do the scanning here. So bunch of uh, error handling and routing and making sure that I've got the right um, item set up. As mentioned, if this is a false positive, I'm going to move that computer out of my lockdown collection and create a false positive email, right? This incident was a false positive and we don't need to move on. However, if this is indeed uh, an event that I need to respond to, well, Let's go ahead and actually do this scan here. So this is where we're actually going to uh, scan the, the, the item. We're going to force it through live update first. We are going to force it through a full scan. And what we're going to do is loop back into this for each item that we're scanning. Right? Remember back up at the beginning of my web form up here, we're going to say, yeah, go ahead and scan all of these computers. Right? Chad, Stephanie's, Matt's, Jonathan's. So it's going to loop through my scan collection, first initiate a live update, and then it's going to initiate um, a, a full scan. These are all tasks that are going to be kicked off within, within your set manager, a separate task for each item. 
So something happens, right? Your live update happens, your full scan happens, and then at the end of the day, we need then to uh, figure out what's happened, right? So was this incident remediated fully? If the answer to that is yes, kick that back out of the um, lockdown group and then finish my workflow process. If we have um, an additional issue, well, we're unable to fix that computer. Now, if you're leveraging Altiris, right, um, as you say, it's right now it's just getting to the whole uh, unable to fix re-image that computer, right? So if I'm leveraging Altiris, I could then kick that for my next step to call another workflow to call my imaging process. So there's a lot of real cool things that we can do if we're unable to fix that computer. If we are able to fix that computer, you know, we run a scan and don't generate another incident or another alert, we want to remove that computer from the lockdown, flag that computer as fixed, and then terminate and end up. What are your takeaways from this? So a couple of things that we can do. One, obviously we've remediated um, some incidences automatically with semantic workflow. We had an incident, we generated we processed it and responded to it outside of the set manager and moved on from there. Thanks all for attending. Have a great day.